a second way to classify matter based on its composition. So this is notebook page 25. I'm going to fill in the top two parts of this page. So matter is anything that has mass and it takes up space. We learned how we can describe or classify matter based on phase, solid, liquid, or gas. But a more specific way of comparing matter is by looking at its composition. And matter can be um, subclassified into substance or mixture. So it, matter is referred to as a substance because the sample is only made up of one type of particle. So therefore, all the particles in the sample are identical to each other. And the reason that they are identical to each other is because when we look at their composition, when we look at the composition, we're looking at the type of atoms present but we also look at the structure of the, of the particles, which refers to how all those atoms um, are linked or bonded to, e to each other, so the bond pattern. So a substance is made up of one type of particle because all the particles are identical, not only just in their composition, the type of atoms present, but their structure also, how the bonds are, how the atoms are linked together. And so the composition and structure are the same through the whole sample and between samples. Now, chemistry gets really specific when we talk about phases. So how we use phases in our everyday lives is a little bit broad. But if you see a chemical formula and it's marked to the right with an S, meaning that that sample is in the solid state, then it is a substance. It's a pure form of matter. Or if it's marked with an L, as in liquid, liquids are considered pure substances. Or lastly, if it's marked with a G. So in chemistry class, if a substance is marked as a solid, liquid or gas, then it represents a substance. It is pure in its nature because every particle present is identical to all the others. Our other type of matter is a mixture and probably mostly what we use in our everyday lives is actually mixtures. So mixtures are made up of different types of particles. There's more than one type present. So the particles in the sample are not identical to each other. And one reason is because they have different structures. Also, within a, within a mixture, the composition can vary. So it can vary within the same sample, or it can vary between samples. So in chemistry, um, there are some different phases other than solid, liquid, and gas. But the one that we tend to focus on and we talk a lot about is the phase aqueous, A-Q-U-E-O-U-S, and its symbol is A-Q. So any substance that uses the term aqueous or after its formula you see it's AQ, then that means it is a mixture, that that substance has been mixed with water. Now on your note page you can see it here, the last, the last bullet here. So mixtures, because it's just different particles sharing a container, they can be easily separated. So we can separate a mixture by a physical process. Oops, move that a little bit too much. Oh. 
who struggle with the technology. So I want to, so let's see if I can get this into view here. Okay, so now substances. We can actually subclassify them into two major categories. So a substance only has one type of particle present within the sample. All the particles are identical. Our two major categories of substances are the element and the compound. So an element is a substance in which there is only one type of atom. So notice it doesn't say that there's one atom, there's one type of atom. So let's look at a couple of examples. So for instance, the element gold. If I write gold's chemical formula, it's simply its periodic symbol AU. Now another element that you're familiar with, oxygen. Okay, oxygen, its chemical formula is just not its periodic symbol, but oxygen in nature, it is represented by O2. And then lastly, here's a third example, is the element phosphorus. And phosphorus, one of the ways that we find it in nature, it has a chemical formula of P4. So notice, in each of these elemental formulas, there's only one element symbol present, but the subscript does not have to be one. It's just the oxygen, it's made up of two identical oxygen atoms that share a bond. Same thing with the phosphorus. There are four phosphorus atoms present within the particle, and they are four phosphoruses bonded together. A compound, okay? So a compound, it's made up of one type of particle. But what makes the compound different than the element is that the compound has a fixed ratio. And remember, when we, use, when we use the term it's fixed in chemistry, it means it doesn't change. So a compound, it has a fixed ratio. So a fixed ratio of different elements. So let's look at a couple of examples. So if I write the term water, the chemical formula that should pop into your mind is H2O. So water is made up of the element hydrogen and oxygen, so two different elements, and their ratio is it requires two hydrogens to every one oxygen. So it's a two to one ratio. That's a fixed ratio because if I change that ratio and make it a 2 to 2 ratio, so the formula would be H2O2, that is a real substance, it would no longer be water. And this substance, if you put it on your skin or you put some in your mouth or you put it on your hair, it would interact with, with all of those, your skin and your hair differently than water does. So this is hydrogen peroxide. Right, you put water on your hair, your hair gets wet. You put hydrogen peroxide on your hair, yeah, it gets wet, but if you leave it on there, it starts to bleach your hair out into a weird orangey color. Okay, one more example. So if I put the term glucose, and most of you know that term, and you know the chemical formula C6H12O6. This one has three different elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and we have a fixed ratio of a one to two to one. So a compound, it's one type of particle. It maintains a fixed ratio of different elements. Now, subclassification of mixtures. Okay, so within a two major categories are homogeneous or homogeneous 
and heterogeneous. So when we talk about mixtures, we're talking about particle distribution. So that prefix HOMO entails the idea of same, where H-E-T-E-R-O represents the idea of different. So in a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture, that means that we have the same particle distribution through the whole sample. So we could put it as a uniform distribution. And if I was to draw a picture of a homogeneous mixture, I'm just going to use X's and O's, I would have something like this, trying to show them equally distributed through the sample. So uniform distribution. Whereas a heterogeneous mixture, it lacks that uniform distribution. So I'm going to write not uniform distribution. And a lot of times, you, you, when you look at a heterogeneous mixture, you can see visual, visual differences. So I'm going to just put diff for differences. Many times, uh, the different particles actually create layers. And a good rule of thumb is it's probably a heterogeneous mixture, especially if it's a consumer item that you need to shake or stir before you use. So if you shake it, or stir it before you use it, it's probably a heterogeneous mixture because there's layers or some sort of settling. So if I was to draw a picture here, okay, I would have one type of particle creating a layer and then a different type of particle would create another layer. So it's not equal distribution through the entire container. Uh, an example of a homogeneous mixture, one I can't live without, would be like coffee or a sports drink. Where my favorite heterogeneous mixture, you can see the layers, would be an example would be like pizza. Uh, 